The prospect of children going back to face masks fill, well, fills me with absolute dread and horror. My daughter is uh, exempt from wearing one in the communal area. She will be exempt from wearing one in the classroom on the basis that, I mean, she had COVID in October. She had it in March last year, as I did. Um, she, she, she's not at risk from COVID. Masks don't make a blind bit of difference. Um, you're the chair of the Education Select Committee. Have you been presented with any evidence that suggests there is any benefit uh, that is any greater than the huge cost of children wearing masks all day? Um, quite the opposite. In fact, uh, Will Quince, who's the children's minister, came to my committee in December and said himself that there was very limited evidence as to the efficacy of, <clears throat> of masks in educational settings, limited evidence. And my questions um, about this are why um, adults don't have to wear it in offices. Now, it's true. Don't, don't uh, encourage them. Yeah, yeah, but it's true that adults have to start uh, being suggested to work from home, but millions of people aren't able to work from home. They're not permanent secretaries at home with their Peloton bikes. Uh, secondly, we know uh, that wearing masks for children, survey after survey shows, there's evidence around the world from Belgium to Canada to the United States suggests that it has negative effects on their mental health, their well-being, um, their learning, their emotional development, even um, Mr. Van, Professor Van Tam, widely respected, he says that masks are quite inhibitory to the natural expressions of learning in children. The third thing I'd say is that the government seems to keep moving the goalposts. They say if we get vaccinated, we can get the schools open again. If yeah. um, children are vaccinated, we get the schools open again. I'm absolutely in favour of vaccination. But now this has all been done. Now our most teachers and support staff have been vaccinated. Many will have had the boost of vaccination. Why are we forcing children to wear masks? And just the final thing I would say is this should not be a Hobson's choice. It's not should be we, we will keep the schools open if children wear masks. We keep the children open. We keep the schools full open. Because, full stop. Because we know the damage that it's been doing to children not being in school. And although the Secretary of State, who I hugely respect, said that 99% of schools were open, that's a good thing. We know that 230,000 children were not in school before Christmas. 230,000 children did not have COVID. And we also know there are another 100,000 children missing from school almost yeah. entirely. They've not returned to school since, open, since they opened formally last year. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. The evidence of the damage of schools being closed, it, it, it was evident within weeks uh, last year. We, and the evidence of children wearing masks, again, we see the, uh, and, and even adults wearing masks around children. We've seen uh, the damage to children's uh, communication ability, their learning the speech impairment has been extraordinary. It's really well documented. Dame Rachel D'Souza, the Children's Commissioner for England, has said that it's concerning that pupils would be wearing masks all day, but she says, you know, but adults are not wearing them at, at their workplaces. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it is it is interesting how many people seem to think it's necessary. Um, we also know there is no evidence. And again, this is this is from from the you know Royal College of Pediatrics. Very, very clear. There is no evidence that schools are this sort of plague pit of COVID uh, and, uh, and and the, that's where COVID is being spread. The schools simply represent local community spread. It's just that we're testing all those kids and we know that children are at very low risk. We also know that teachers are not at any other risk than anyone else going out to work. That's been very well documented uh, by SAGE and other professionals. So why do you think the government has done this other than um, this is something, we need to do something, this is something this will do, and pressure from teaching unions like the National Education Union who have been demanding masks. I mean, frankly, they want kids to wear masks for the rest of time, don't they? Do you think this is just a sop to militant teaching unions? Well, my view is um, whatever the unions will say, whatever they're going to say, and they, they're a pressure group. But at the end of the day, the government's got to lead and um, they have to make the decision and they have to balance this idea of making kids wear masks with the potential significant uh, impact it will have on their mental health and well-being. And what I uh, find wrong is that there is no that all the consideration is being given to COVID, which, as you say, schools are not significant vectors of transmission. Children, thank goodness, at low risk from COVID. Uh, teachers and support staff have been vaccinated. And yet all the 
all the uh, uh, evidence is, or th what the government is saying is that all the impact is being looked at in terms of COVID and not in terms of children's mental health, well-being and their educational development. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to blame the unions here because it's the government that makes the decision, the government that leads. And in my view, this is the wrong decision. I'm glad the schools are opening. Uh, I think that is incredibly important. We've got to get all our kids back to school, uh, but it's not a Hobson's choice. You, you open the schools and you have to wear masks. Yeah. And this is it. We've constantly been told, haven't we, that, you know, if everyone, all the adults get vaccinated, then kids can be at school. And, and then it was, you say, if all the children get vaccinated, then, then kids can be in school. And if they wear masks, then we, we constantly got there's, the, the goalposts keep moving. And even though I, I do want to give credit to the government uh, in Westminster for not bringing in a lot of the utterly pointless and very, very authoritarian measures that we've seen in Scotland and in Wales and in Northern Ireland in recent months. Um, and they, I do want to give them credit for that. There is still an element where they sort of get dragged kicking and screaming into these things and then sort of provide a post rational justification for it. When actually all this is, it's media pressure, it's union pressure, as opposed to saying, look, there's no evidence for this. Can everyone just calm down? Our kids are better off in school, living a normal life, and, you know, and some of them are going to get COVID and they're going to go home and some of them are going to give to their parents. And, I'm, you know, that's the reality because we are living with an endemic virus and everyone, frankly, needs to just get used. We were constantly told, aren't we, we've got to learn to live with this virus. And every time we attempt to do so, then they start closing things down again. Well, when the um, Children's Commissioner expressed significant reservations, when the Royal Society of Paediatrician expresses significant reservations, when even... Uh, Professor Van Tam uh, acknowledges that masks are inhibitory to the expressions of learning for children uh, in, in school. Um, the government should sit up and take notice. We've got to get our schools open. Let's get ventilation systems into yeah. all the schools that need it. That will be one of the best ways of reducing COVID. But when they make these decisions, they've got to weigh up the impact on children's well-being and mental health. And what I'd like to see from the government um, on a Wednesday in the House of Commons is not just what the UKSHA says or a survey says about masks, but what impact assessment they've done that masks have in terms of the impact on children's well-being and educational development and emotional uh, development. Because the World Health Organization says that if you do implement a policy of masks for children, that that should be done from the outset. So the government should publish both at the same time. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. We should always see that evidence in advance and it should be clear cut. And if it's not clear cut, we shouldn't go ahead and do it. 